NBC's Matt Bradley reporting for us from Ukraine and joining us now, Senior Coalition's Advisor for Concerned Veterans for America, retired Master Sergeant Jason Beardsley. He's a decorated combat veteran and intelligence officer. Uh, so many different moving parts here. Uh, as Matt Bradley talked about Britain uh, sending in tanks, the U.S. is expanding training of Ukrainian forces. Um, and yet there also was warning that there would be a horrific strike by Russia. And here we are facing it. How do you uh, what do you make of the battlefield at this point and Ukraine's ability to continue holding the Russians off? Yeah, this is a uh, it's tragic to watch this. And now we're two years and a year into this conflict and it really doesn't have an end in sight. And I think it's important to point out that both sides in this conflict are unable to achieve their maximal objectives. And what does that look like for Russia, control of the western Ukraine? For Ukraine, it looks like uh, taking back Crimea and the Donetsk and Luhansk province, when uh, those are really unlikely. And so what you're looking at is we're going to see more of this type of um, tragedy if we don't look for an off-ramp. And that's where I think the administration of the United States has to be very careful and very helpful in subtly behind the scenes working towards convincing the parties at, at bay that that off-ramp is our best chance of, of not continuing this for 10 years. Well, that's the one of the real points of tension right now. I think a lot of European countries are sort of nudging Ukraine to that off-ramp. They're bearing the brunt of the economic toll. Um, the U.S. to this point has very much said, hey, the Ukrainians, are, we're going to leave it up to them. They have to decide. Now, maybe that tone will will change. We're, you know, we're about to, as you say, hit the second year mark. President Zelensky is probably going to speak at the U.N. next month about this. But analysts I've talked to suggest this is a conflict that could last not we shouldn't be thinking about it in terms of months, but right. years. So how do you how do you nudge that's how do you, if you're the Biden administration, subtly nudge, as you say, the the Ukrainians to accept the deal when they can look around and say, Well, why shouldn't we fight for every single inch, considering the atrocities we've suffered and also the victories on the battlefield that we've accomplished? Yeah, this this is very hard. And I think Ukraine has to be uh, commended for holding the ground, defending their terrain that they have. But remember, an offensive campaigns are so much different. And projecting into Luhansk and Donetsk province and Crimea, those are going to require something of a conventional mindset that we haven't seen for a long time. So the real challenge to nudge or to help nudge is to really explain those maximal objectives are impossible for both sides, which means that the longer this protracts, the more they have to face what is really a uh, crushing or blithering uh, the waste of the Ukrainian resources. So their best means to get to the table and negotiate is to leverage everything they've gained so far for what they can get, not what they maximally want. That's going to be too tough and it's going to put us here for a long time. So let's look at the Russian side of it. Uh, you know, President Putin doesn't, at least not yet, facing any real internal pressure to wrap this up. It's been a disaster for him to this point. So he feels like he needs to have to stay with it, to show some sign of victory. Um, but give us your assessment of the Russian forces. There's been a lot of warnings from the Ukrainians saying that they believe Russia is trying to mount another significant offensive in maybe the next month or two, maybe even at Kiev. But from what you see of the Russians, do they actually have any ability to do that? Well, we, we've watched them all along. Sure, they'll mount what they consider an offensive, but they haven't been very disciplined about that. They've also got disparate command and control. They've changed their leadership on the ground. And we've seen that they haven't had the real sort of spirit to fight this at the ground level. So a campaign for them that looks successful is very difficult. And that's, again, another reason why the Biden administration can be smart, work with its European allies. You had Clinton Watt on earlier. And there's some great news that the Europeans are starting to kick in or starting to see the relevance of being more of the, the share partner here. Uh, tanks, anti-aircraft missiles, things like that, the weapons. That's the right way to do this. But again, it's tricky because uh, the president has got to kind of balance between overestimating his hand and negotiating behind the scenes. That's why it's important to keep dialogue open with Moscow uh, and important to keep dialogue open with Zelensky. Uh, Sergeant, with the reports of the atrocities we were hearing about, sexual attacks, the fresh attack that we just saw here, just cruelty beyond belief, what if there is no off-ramp? I mean, there are some in military circles very high up who say Vladimir Putin seems different. If... It I think that the end of this is going to be an off-ramp. It, it, it doesn't necessarily matter 
whether we get there in a year or whether we get there in 10 years, except to the people of Ukraine. So the point is, yeah, Vladimir Putin, he's got something else going on in his mind. He's calculating how long he can stay there. Don't forget the United States was in Iraq and Afghanistan for 20 years. What gains we had there were questionable, and we had the largest conventional force uh, in, in our history. So um, Ukraine being able to sustain what Russia is able to sustain over the next three, four, five years, if it goes that long, is is a dire condition for Ukraine. And my, my recommendation would be, and I think the administration has been smart about this, limiting how much the U.S. is involved, but it's got to get involved in using its weight, its, its, uh, its, its cachet with the Europeans to make sure that Putin doesn't see any way to get to those objectives. That's the best means for doing this. Retired Master Sergeant Jason Beardsley, thank you very much for coming on this morning.